girl. Hello, everyone. How you all doing? Praise the Lord. We are back with you again. And I pray that we have uh, a little time to share with you tonight just to, just to refresh you in the Word. Amen. Good evening. My name is Pastor Larry, New Life in Christ Jesus Church in Sacramento, California. And uh, thank you for joining me on this broadcast. Let's pray. Father, we come to you now in the gracious and mighty name of Jesus. God, we thank you that your hand continually rests upon us and upon your people. God, you have not left us alone. Now, Father, I ask you that you would guide our hearts and our minds. Let every word be established so that your kingdom will come and that your will be done in our lives, in earth as it is in heaven. Now, Father, we bless you and we thank you and we glorify you. Now, Lord, I ask you that you would anoint every ear to hear, prepare every heart to receive. Make my tongue as of a pen of a red writer to write your word upon the hearts and upon the mind of your people that they will know the truth and that the truth shall make them free. And we give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, God bless you all. Thank you all for joining today. Amen. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about healing. Amen. A little bit about healing. How many of you know that it is God's will for you to be healed today? Amen. You don't have to wait. You don't have to suffer. You don't have to. Uh, if 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 you if you, if, you, if you're going to leave this earth, you don't have to leave sick. God wants to heal you. Amen. How do I know? Because I know He healed me. He healed me, and He healed plenty of others around me. Amen. And I know He can heal. I know He wants to heal you too. And so I'm I'm excited about this message. I've been excited about it ever since God healed me. Amen. And I know that God is so good. That he loves his people and he wants to touch every heart. He wants to touch every heart. Amen. And he wants to touch your heart. That's right. He wants to touch your heart. And so let, let us yield to the spirit of the living God today. Amen. Let us yield to the spirit of the living God today. And let him touch us. Amen. Let him minister to us. Let him, let him show himself strong on our behalf. You may not need healing, but you know someone around you that does. Amen. How can we know God's will when it comes to healing? Well, in, in order for us to apply this word, we must believe that God wants us healed. Amen. Because if you don't believe that God wants you healed, it's going to be kind of difficult for you to receive from God. Amen. Because you still operate in, you, you got to operate in, in the realm of faith. Amen in the realm of faith and belief, amen? Not in doubt and unbelief, but in faith and belief, amen? Because the Bible says, and the Bible says, how you doing, Dana? The Bible says that all things are possible to him that believe, amen? All things are possible to him that believe. And so I believe that it is time for us to receive everything that God promised us. And so let us put our hearts, let us, let us open up our hearts. Let's make a decision. Let's make a quality decision that we're going to open up our hearts in 2020 and receive God's promise in our lives. Amen. Oh, when the will of God is made known, the promise of God is revealed to our hearts. Hallelujah. And that's when we know that we have what we ask for. When we know his will, God will hear and answer prayer. One of the greatest... Uh, limitation that we have that we put on God is not knowing amen it's not knowing his will this is one of the greatest hindrance that we place upon not only on God but on ourselves when we believe in God for something and we're not knowing that it is his will for him to do such amen we hinder God from moving on our behalf because of our unbelief amen because of our unbelief. God wants to touch you tonight. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to set you free. Amen. He wants to set you free. 
And I believe that what would be a better time than to, than to accept your healing than tonight. Amen. So let us see what's the will of God in this area for you and for me. Amen. Because when I was sick, I had no money. I had no insurance. All I had was a lot of pain in my body. And I believe that God was able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that I ask or think. And I dare to believe. I dare to believe. And when I believe, glory to God, he just supernaturally touched me. And I, and I, and, and, in my heart, in my heart, I knew that God had healed me. I knew that he had healed me. No one had to tell me. I knew it. Amen. Now, you think, well, well, that was you. You a preacher. No, God, God wants to heal you. I've seen many people healed. They weren't preachers. Amen. Amen. It's just that God is looking at our faith. Do you have faith today to be healed? Do you believe that God can? That's the most important thing. Do you believe that he can? Remember the remember the, the leopard man in Mark in Matthew chapter 8? Amen. Verse number 2, he said, Lord, if thou can if thou wilt, thou can make me clean. Amen. And Jesus put forth his hand and touched him, saying, I will be thou clean. See, the man, he didn't know was it God's will for him to be healed, but he asked him. He asked him. So if you don't know that it's God's will for you to be healed, you can ask him. Amen. Don't walk away and don't throw in the towel. Don't give up. Don't turn your back on God because someone else got healed and you didn't get yours. Do like that person did. Believe. Believe in your heart. Amen. That's what it's all about. Believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth what you believe in your heart. You got to know the will of God in order to receive the promises of God. Amen. Activated in your life. God is no respect of a person. Amen. So one of the greatest, one of the greatest limitations that we put on God is, is not knowing what is his will concerning the matter that we're believing for. Or if we believe for finances, we got to know the will of God concerning finances. If we want healing, we got to know the will of God concerning healing. If we don't know the will of God concerning these areas, then it's going to be very difficult for us to receive from God, even though it is a promise to us. Amen. Even though he promised it to us, yet we got to believe it. We have to believe it because God is not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. Had he not said it and should he not make it good, God will confirm his word with signs following. Amen. <clears throat> people are people are saying, well, I believe God will heal me when he get ready. Well, he's ready right now. <laughs> he's ready right now. I believe we should turn that I believe we should turn that statement around. I believe God will heal me when I'm ready. That's what we should be saying, not when he get ready because he's ready. He's waiting on you and me to be ready. Amen. He's waiting on us to get ready. Hallelujah. Amen. So now how do we know how do we know <coughs> How do we know when, when God is ready to do it? Amen. Well, he's ready right now. See, the Bible says in the book of Mark. Let's just, let's just go to the book of Mark, chapter 11. Amen. Let's just turn over to Mark, chapter 11. And look at verse number 22. Mark 11, verse 22. Glory to God. How you doing, my friend? Glory to God. Glory to God. In Mark, chapter 11, verse number 22, it says, And Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. See, Jesus is speaking to their hearts and he's telling them exactly what he expect to see or what he expect to receive from them. He expect to receive faith from them. Amen. Notice what he said in Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. And Jesus answered and said unto them. He telling them exactly what to believe. He telling them to do what? To have faith in God, to have faith in God. Now, why is it so important to have faith in God? 
because let's look at verse number 23 and it'll tell you he said for verily i say unto you that whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass he shall have whatsoever he saith amen so we got to take the limitations off of god amen and we need to take the limitations off of ourselves how we take limitations off ourselves? We take limitations off ourselves by standing flat-footed on the Word of God and don't allow doubt to enter into your heart. Only believe, because all things are possible when we believe. Amen? All things are possible when we believe. So when we come to God, let's believe that He is who He said He is. Amen? Let's just simply believe that He is who He said that He is. Amen? And then just and let's just trust him with all our heart. And let's lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways, let's acknowledge him and he will direct our path. Nothing is hard. Is anything hard for God? No. There's nothing too hard for God. Amen. Nothing too hard for God. And I want you to know that uh, no matter what you're going through in life, God is able to 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 forgive you he's able to heal you he's able to deliver you he's able to set you free regardless of what it is amen and if you and if, if and if something in your life that you know that shouldn't be there just repent and get it out of your life amen repent and get it out of your life right this year you know what i i, I made i made a i made a, a a statement this year amen that this year i was going to live my, I was gonna, I was gonna draw, I was gonna live my life closer to God than I've ever have, Amen. And in, in other words, if there's anything in my life that shouldn't be there, I have to examine my heart. I have to, I have to, I have to judge myself, Amen, so that I would not be judged with the world. And, and and I made that statement, Lord. I want, I just this this year, my resolution is, is to be, is to draw closer to you, Amen. And then I went to this world conference. In in uh, in uh, San Antonio, Texas, with Dr. Marcerello, I went to this world conference, and it looked like every message that was preached was directed toward me. And I said, "Oh my God, this is what I this is what I'm asking you for. This is what I've been. This is what I'm asking you for." Amen. And believe me, believe me, when I left that conference, I left that conference with my mind washed with the washing of the Word. I left that conference with my spirit renewed in my God. Amen. I left that conference knowing that my 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 2020 was going to be a whole lot better than my 2019. How did I, how did that happen? Because I I made I made a point, Lord, that this year 2020 I'm I'm going to I'm going to draw closer to you in word. I'm going to draw closer to you in prayer. Amen. I'm going to draw close to you in spirit. Amen. So we have to we have to understand God is waiting on us to make the decision. He's waiting on us to make a decision. Are you ready to make a decision to draw close to God? Are you ready to declare, God, I want more of you and less of me? Amen. I believe that this is what God is looking for. He's looking for us to open up our heart and desire more of him than of ourselves. And I believe that when we do that, we are going to experience his grace and his delivering power because I believe that right now we are in a place in God that he's going to take us higher and higher. Amen. How is that going to happen? Because I'm drawing closer and closer and closer. And the closer I get, the higher I, the higher he's going to take me. And the, the more I seek his face, the more of his anointing will rest upon me. And the more I, I, I pray, the, the more his grace is going to sustain me. Amen. In other words, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be condemned. God wants to do exceedingly abundant above all that we can ask, think, or imagine. But he is expecting us to simply believe the word. Oh, hallelujah. Can you believe with me today? Can you believe with me today for your healing? Amen. I'm going to believe with you. Amen. Can you believe with me? I'm going to release my faith on your behalf. But I want you to also release your faith. Amen. 
Don't just wait on me. Let God use your faith to bring you to a place where you will experience his grace. I'm going to say that again. Let God use your faith to bring you in a place where you can experience his grace. Because his grace is sufficient for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, I'm just, I'm excited. Now, notice what I said now. In Mark chapter 11, verse number 22. And Jesus said unto them, have faith in God. See, when you when you have faith in God, that means you have an un, you you understand the word. You understand what he's saying. You it, it it's it's not just something that you are saying. It has penetrated your it have went through it went into your mind, but it done penetrated into your heart. It done dropped into your heart, and once it entered into your heart, it's going to begin to come alive. That word began to come alive, and that's what we want, folks. We want the word to come alive within us because once that word come alive, it's going to begin to produce the life and the nature of God. Hallelujah. And that's righteousness and holiness. Amen. Righteousness and holiness. Amen. That's that. This is what I'm looking for this year, 2020. Amen. I'm not going to let my mind wander. Amen. I'm not going to let the enemy uh, cause me to miss my destiny by allowing my mind to wander. Amen. And you should not allow the enemy to uh, mess with your destiny by allowing your mind to wander. Begin to refocus. Begin to take Begin to take uh, charge of your thinking. Begin to take charge of your thoughts. Begin to take charge on what you allow yourself to focus on. Amen. Because when you do, when you make a decision to do that, that's when you're going to begin to experience God's love for you, His deliverance power. He's waiting on you to say, God, I want more of you. You know, I heard I heard a sermon uh, uh, on on uh, on the other day on on uh, on a, what was it, Monday I think it was Monday morning, and uh, it was in a uh, uh, it was last Monday morning, not this Monday. It was last Monday morning. We was in uh, we was in uh, San Antonio, Texas. Uh, Tommy Barnett was preaching, and and he he made a very wise statement. Amen. He made a very wise statement, and he was talking about. Uh, he had two boxes. One box is is doing all the things what you want to do, and the second box is doing the things that God wants you to do. Amen. In other words, you got your will involved, and you got God's will involved. Amen. So, and he said, if you if you're gonna if you if you believe in God to to accomplish some things, then then and he said something like this. He said. Make sure that what you believe in him for is what he has placed upon your heart or something that he has that what you can prove that it is his will in the word. Amen. And then if don't in other words, don't just make don't just put up a uh, don't just make get yourself a plan just because this is something that you want to do. Because you see, you gotta check one of the boxes. Which if it's your if it's your will, if it's your purpose, if it's your plan. Then you're gonna miss out on God's purpose. You're gonna miss out on God's will. You're gonna miss out on God's plan. Amen. So you have to check one or the other box. I'm gonna check the box below because that's the will of God for me. That's the will of God for me, and I believe it's the will of God for you too. Not my will, Lord, but Thy will be done. Thy will be done. Amen. And I know it is God's will to touch you. It is God's will to heal you. It is God's will to deliver you and to make you free. We serve a God that is full of compassion. Amen. Full of compassion and slow to anger. Amen. So when I look at the word of God, I begin to think about the miracles that I read about in the Bible. See, God, the God of miracles was present. Amen. In the time of the widow woman. Amen. Her son. Oh, my God. I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go somewhere else. I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to talk about something else. Glory to God. But her son... Mm, mm, mm. Let me just go somewhere else. But I won't, let, me finish what I'm, let me finish what I'm at right now because this is where, this is where, this is where the rubber meets the road. 
Notice what he said again in, in Mark chapter 20, Mark chapter 11, verse number 23 now. Mark chapter 11, verse number 23, he said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say, see, what we say must come in alignment with what God has said. Because, see, that's his will. Once our hearts and our words come in alignment with his word and with his will, that when we know that we can have that which we have asked him for. Amen. That's when we know we have, have what we have for. Notice what he said. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he said. Amen. Then look at verse number 24. It says, Therefore, it says, Therefore, I say unto you, that what things will ye desire? When you pray, now this is the key to it, folks. This is the key. He said, believe that you receive them. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Amen. Believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And I believe right now that we are headed into a time that God is about to show himself strong in America and on, our, and on the behalf of his people. Amen. And this is why God is calling us to, he calling us to, to intercessory prayer. Amen. God is, 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 is calling us to intercessory prayer, to intercede for our nation, intercede for our, for our people, to intercede for our, for our country. Amen. God is calling us to intercessory prayer. Now, you might say, well, well, that's good for you because you may have a lot of time on your hand. And I'm pretty busy. I don't have time to pray. Well, we need to begin to make time to pray. We need to begin to, uh, 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 if you have to get up uh, 30 minutes early, Get up a little bit earlier so you can spend a little time in the Word and a little time in prayer. I like what Greg Morrow said. He said, every morning before I get out of bed, he said, I read my Bible. Amen. He said, I read my Bible. And so I, st I started doing that. I started doing that. And, and, by, and, and, uh, and, and, I, and, I'm, and don't forget, on Thursdays and Fridays, starting, ne starting next week, because next week we're going on a fast. Next week, we're going on fast. We're going to be fasting and praying starting next week. How many of y'all want to join me on? It's going to be a seven-day fast. How many of you would join me on a seven-day fast from Sunday evening to Sunday evening the following week? Seven days. One week. From Sunday to Sunday. Amen. From Sunday to Sunday. How many of you would, 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 would go with me on this fast? Amen. Because I believe that doing this fast, it's going to be, a, it's going to be a, I, know it's, I know it's the will of God. Because we are, we are preparing to go on into the year of 2020, so we're going to prepare ourselves spiritually, Amen. But then we're not just only going to fast uh, for for one week. From every month, every month we're going to fast three days every month, Amen. We're going to fast seven days, the month of January, then. February three days, March three days, April three days, June three days, July three days, and all through the and all through the to December. And once we have done fasting, the first seven days and three days every day after that, as we have fasted, those many days, at the end of the year, it will come out to be forty days of fasting. Amen. 40 days of fast. Then you can say, have you ever fasted 40 days? Then you can say, yes, I have fasted 40 days. Amen. Because you, it will be true. You won't be, it, it won't be a lie. You can fast 40 days. Amen. You can fast 40 days. And that's what we're going to start. Uh, we're going to start this Sunday afternoon or this Sunday morning, whichever. We're going to start fasting at, uh, we're going to start fasting. Then on the, uh, the following Sunday, we're going to be ending that fast at the same time that we start. At the same time that we start, we're going to end it on that on that on that following Sunday. Amen. We're going to. It's going to be powerful, and we're going to be, we're going to, we, we believe in God for breakthrough. We believe in God for signs, wonders, and miracles. Amen. That's why I'm that's why I'm here tonight to encourage you, not just to understand the will of God so you can receive the promise of God that you believe in for, but also to open up your heart and allow the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to minister to your own heart concerning 
your need, your healing, if you have need of healing. Amen. Because I know that God wants to touch you. He wants to heal you. He wants to deliver you. And he wants to set you free. Amen. 2020 is going to be a time of visitation. It's going to be a time of visitation. Many people, many people are going to be visited by the Lord, by, by the Spirit of God this, this, this year. Amen. Whether it be by the Spirit, whether it be by a, a, the divine a, a appointment, whether it be by uh, angelic uh, host. Amen. Some, some of you are going to be visited this year, 2020. Amen. God said it. I believe it. And that settles it. And that's why we need to begin to, we need, we all need to begin, we need to begin to, to uh, uh, govern our hearts, begin to watch over our hearts. Amen. In other words, begin to judge our hearts. The things that, that we are uh, focused on, is it God's will that we're focused on these things? Or is it our will that we focus on these things? Are we doing it for to bring God glory? Are we doing it to, to self for self-exaltation? Amen. We need to uh, be sure about what we're doing and when we're doing it. Because God is watching us. Amen. God is watching us. And God is going to visit us. And when he visits you, what would he find in your heart? Amen. What would he find in your heart? I believe that God wants to touch. God wants to minister. God wants to bring us to a place in him that we've never been before. Amen. That we've never been before. So healing is a part of that. Healing is a part of it. If you, never, if you believe in God for healing, you didn't get your healing in 2019, well, now is the time that you release your faith and receive what God has for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Because I believe that right now is your season. Right now is your season. Amen. Because the Bible tells us here, the Bible tells us here, amen, let me just turn here, and I'm going to bring you right there just a second. The Bible tells us that uh, in 1 Peter 2, 24, he said, who, who, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sin should live unto righteousness by whose stripes we are healed. Amen. Ye are ye were healed. So if God is saying that you were healed, then why not get in on get in on the on the truth of that word? I'll meditate upon that word. Meditate upon that word, especially if you believe in God for healing. Meditate upon that word. Allow that word. To enter into your spirit, not just in your head. We need more than head knowledge. When we're talking to God about our, our health, when we're talking to God about our healing, we need, see, he said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. He didn't say, from the knowledge of your head, the mouth, your, your mouth speak. He said, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. Amen. So when we allow God to, when we allow God to, 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 to speak to our heart Folks we're stepping in the place Where we will see The glory of God manifested on our part Why? Because God is with us He said he's going to help you Look at the book of Isaiah chapter 41 Isaiah 41 God said he'll help you, he'll strengthen you He'll be right there He'll be right there for you Isaiah 41 verse number 10 he says He said fear, fear thou not for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. That word dismayed to me, I, I look at that word as be not discouraged. Amen. Be not discouraged. God doesn't want you to become discouraged and lose heart, lose faith, walk, allow the enemy to defeat you. 2020 is your year to come out from the bondage that have held you back the whole year of 2019. And it's time for you to walk free of that bondage. I made a decision. 2020 is going to be a time that I'm going to draw closer and closer and closer to God. Amen. Closer and closer to God. And I told God, I said, God, I want my life to be a light to the world like never before. Amen. I, will, I want my life to shine brighter and brighter than ever before. And the only way that can happen, folks, is that I draw closer to him. 
Because as I draw closer to him, he's going to draw closer to me. Oh my God, I'm feeling the presence of God right now like I don't know what. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I want you to know that as I'm drawing closer to God, we're going to be praying like uh, we're going on this fast. Every week, starting next week, every week, we're going to pray. God bless you too. Amen. Every week, starting next week, Thursday and Friday, we're going to do Daniel prayers. You know, you, you know how Daniel prayed? On Thursday and Friday, we're going to start doing Daniel prayers on Thursday and Friday, starting next week. Amen. And we're going to do it every week from that point on. Daniel prayer. You know how Daniel prayed? He prayed three times a day. On Thursday and Friday, we're going to pray three times a day. Amen. Now, we did this uh, uh, like, three, four, like three, four years ago. And we had great success at it. And God put it on my heart to do it again. To call intercessors. Amen. To reach out to the intercessors. And have the intercessors around around the globe. Those that are those that are willing to uh, to to pray. Amen. To pray. Right now, not only does our nation need prayer. Our country need prayer. But if you listen to me from another country. Your country need prayer too. Your nation need prayer too. Amen. So when we all come together and begin to pray for our country and for the leaders of our countries, amen, we can, we can see the hand of God directing our leaders on how to conduct business or how to conduct uh, the, the affairs of our nations. If we don't pray for them, then we're going to accept whatever, the, whatever, whatever that comes forth. But if we pray for them and cover them in prayer, then we're going to see the will of God manifesting. Amen. We're going to see the will of God manifest. So we're going to be praying for our leaders. We're going to be praying. And then, man, we're going to be on, on, the, on, the, on, the, on the Friday, on Thursday morning. On Thursday morning, we'll be praying for the uh, for the Jerusalem. We're going to put God first. How we put God first? By praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Praying for the leaders that God has set in office in Jerusalem. You... Hey man, if you don't know who the who who, who uh, the prime minister or whoever it is that we pray for, just say just pray uh, for the for the leaders, the prime the prime minister. And just, if you don't know his name, look it up. It's Benjamin Netanyahu, and pr pray for him. Pray for his family. He needs to be able to make sound decisions in and leading his uh, the, the 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 children of Israel. Hey Amen. Glory to God. Then we, at twelve noon. We're going to pray for our leader. Amen. No, we're going to pray for our leaders at 12 noon. Amen. That's what I said before. I think, yeah, it's either way, either way. We're going to pray for our leaders. And then at 3 p.m., no, at 12 noon, we're going to pray for the, the church leaders, the leaders of the church. The leaders of the church. That's what we're praying for at, the, uh, at first. Amen. We're going to pray for the... 9 in the morning, we're going to be praying for uh, Jerusalem. At 12 noon, we're going to be praying for uh, uh, the, the, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teachers. And at uh, 3 p.m., we're going to be praying for the leaders of our nations. Amen. The leaders of our nations. Amen. So those are going to be, these are going to be the, uh, the, the way we're going to be focusing our prayers starting Oh, we've been doing it already, but we're gonna be we're gonna be going full force, full speed ahead, starting this coming Tuesday. We're gonna uh, Thursday, I mean. We're gonna be going on a fast. On starting Sunday, we're going on a fast, and during this fast, during this fast, we want you to pray also. We want you to pray, and read read the word and pray, and if you have time to meditate on the word, meditate upon the word so that the word can begin to penetrate your heart and work in your heart, bringing you that inner strength so that you will be able to uh, uh, finish your fast strong, amen? Because if you're not in the word, if you're not praying and in the word and meditate upon the word, you, it's going to be hard for you to, to fast properly, amen? It's going to be hard for you to fast properly. I don't, you, you choose the way you want to fast, Amen. I'm going to fast uh, just water only myself 
but you choose how you're going to fast and the way you fast that's the way uh whatever whichever way you choose that's where you just stick to it amen if you're going to fast one meal a day then fast one meal a day that's all well and good but make sure you fast something if you want to you if you're going to fast computer fast computer you're going to fast tv fast tv amen do something that's going to cause your spirit to be strengthened amen amen and so I'm going to fast and I'm going to pray and I'm going to read my word and I'm going to I'm going to seek the face of God. Amen. And then that during the same time we're going to have nights of prayer over at the church. We're going to have a night of prayer where we go in at 6:30 after work and we 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 pray until midnight. Then we then we go home. Amen. During this fast. And so we want you all to join us and and be a part of this. Amen. Now, when we're doing this, this is this is not this is going to be something that you do on your own because if you was here with us, then that'd be a different story. But we want we want to draw close to God this year, Amen. We don't want nothing to 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 hinder our faith, to hinder our relationship with the Lord, Amen. How many of you ready to to just push on through the roadblocks that the enemy has put before you, Amen? And just see where God wants to take you. Then we're going to have to do it by knowing his will. Not only for healing, but also in prayer. Who, do you, who, who to pray for and how do we pray? Amen. Now when I talk about praying for our leaders, I want you to, let's, let me just look at first, let me just look at first Timothy. Amen. Look at first Timothy chapter two. Amen. Let me just show you here that I'm, 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 I'm I'm, I'm talking about the scripture. I'm talking about the word of God. Amen. Because you see, God wants us to pray. Amen. God wants us to pray. He wants us to seek his face. Now, notice what he said, chapter 2, 1 Timothy, chapter 2. And look at verse number 1. He said, I exalt, therefore, that first of all, supplications, prayer, intercession, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Amen. So when we learn the will of God concerning prayer, we know that we have to pray for all men. Amen. And notice what it said in verse number two, for kings and for all that are in authority. He's talking about our leaders. He's talking about those that, that, that have been set in office in the high office of our lands. Amen. He's talking about our leaders. We got to pray for our leaders. Amen. Amen. So notice what it said, verse number two again. For kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceful life in all godliness and honesty. For this is God, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have all men to be saved. Amen. See, God wants all to be saved. All. Not just some, but he wants all to be saved. So when we believe in God for whatever we believe in God for, then folks, let's believe him with all our heart. Let's believe him with all our heart. Amen? Now, back to you that believe in God for your healing. I had to, I had to, I had to share that before I got done. But uh, for those of you that believe in God for your healing, I want you to look with me back in the book of Isaiah once again. In Isaiah chapter 50, 53. Isaiah chapter 53. Amen? In Isaiah chapter 53. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Glory to God. I'm excited, boy. I'm excited. Because I know, I know that God is ready right now to heal you. Since healing is a is, is a benefit of the atonement, you should accept Jesus not only as your savior, but also as your healer. Amen, because he's a, it's, it's part of the atonement, except not only as your savior, but also as your healer, amen. How can I keep you from, how, I, if, we can, if we can just stay clean from sin, I'm telling you, your healing will come forth even quicker. But notice what he said right here, Isaiah chapter 53. I know this is a scripture that we use quite often, but what can I say? I got to preach and I got to teach until you understand it, until you get it in your spirit. 
until you start believing it. Then when you start believing it, then you're going to get healed. Amen. Don't say, what well, I heard him talk like that. I heard him say that so many times. No, you have you you heard, but you didn't you didn't receive what I said. You only heard what I said. Amen. And you misunderstood what I said because if you had not misunderstood, if you didn't understand, if you if you had got it correctly, you'd have been you, you you should be walking in divine healing right now. Amen. So now don't just hear what I'm saying. Believe and receive what I'm saying because I'm not talking of my own accord. I'm talking the word of God. And the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And they will minister to your heart if you allow them to. So in Isaiah chapter 53, look at verse number four. He said, surely he had borne our grief and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteem him, stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. For he was wounded for our transgression and bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his strife, the Bible said that we are healed. He said, we are healed. Amen. We are healed. Glory to God. So if we are healed, amen, then we, then what do we, what do we got, what are we doing? If we are healed, then let's, let's receive our healing. Amen. Then let's look at, uh, amen, uh, in the book of, uh, uh, let's look at the book of Proverbs. Amen. Book of Proverbs. I want you to glory to God. Glory to God. Let me get over here first. Chapter 7. Amen. Thank you, Lord. 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 God, you're so good. You're so good. Go see it, Lord. Sambala kiti, Lord. Now that's Psalm, 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 Psalm. Excuse me, Psalms. Let's go to Psalm 107. 107. There we go. There you go. Psalm 107 verse 20. Notice what he said. That's what I that's what, that's what I look. Psalm 107 verse 20 he said, He sent, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. The word of God has the ability to heal you from your destruction. But you gotta believe that it's God's will for you to be healed. Remember the leper, how he came to Jesus and said, Lord, if thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus said, I will be thou clean. Be thou clean. Amen. He put forth his hand and touched him and said, I will be thou clean. Hallelujah. Now, Psalms 103 Let's back up to 103. Now notice what he said right here. Psalms 103. This is this is a psalm of David. A psalm of David. He said, Bless Jehovah, O my soul. And the King James Version said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Amen. And he said, And, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless Jehovah, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thy iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases. Amen. Who forgiveth all thy iniquity, who healeth all thy diseases. Now notice what it said in verse number four. Because, you see, you're in the right place right now, at the right time. And it says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. Remember what he said in Psalms 107 verse 20 he said he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction notice what he said right here in Psalms 103 and verse number 4 he says right here who redeemeth thy life from destructions amen from destruction and crowned thee with loving kindness and tender mercies amen 
loving kindness and tender mercy. God is so good. If we would just open up our hearts and say, God, I believe your word. I receive your word. Be it unto me according to your word. Amen. God wants to show himself strong on our behalf. Amen. Remember, he's with you and he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's always there with you. And he's just looking for you to trust him. Note what it said in the, in the, in the book of Psalms. Mr. Isaiah, in the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 56. Isaiah chapter 56. Look at verse number 6. Isaiah 56 and verse number 56. Amen. And it says, Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And it said, Call ye upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way. Oh God, that's powerful there. Listen to that. Let the wicked forsake his way. Verse number 7. This is Isaiah 56, verse number, verse number 7. Let the wicked forsake his way and the unrighteous man his thoughts and let them return unto the Lord and he will have mercy upon him and oh and to and to our God for he will abundantly pardon God wants to pardon what you know you said well what I've done so many bad things I don't know if I could ever be forgiven God wants to pardon you of whatever you've done and whatever you're doing he wants to pardon you but he expects you to acknowledge God I need help I need you forgive me I repent of my sin come into my heart God I know that you came into this earth and I know that you died for my sin forgive me I repent I receive you now as my Lord and Savior Open up your heart because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things become new. God wants to bring you to a place in him that you've never walked before. Our God is a good God. He's holy. He's righteous. Amen. He's, he, and, he's, and he's so ready to do a work in your heart that you can imagine, you can't even imagine what God wants to do because God loves you so much that he wants you healed. He wants you delivered. He wants you free. Why? So that you can have a testimony to share with your brother, with your sister, with your friends. Healing is a part of God's plan for your life. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what country you're from. It doesn't matter your nationality, it doesn't matter, your color, amen, all that matters is your love toward him, empty yourself, empty yourself of all that you are, and give yourself to him, Lord, I want more of you, I want more of you, I want to know you in the pardon of my sin, I want to know you in the power of your resurrection and your suffering. God, I want to know you as Christ, my healer. I want to know you as my deliverer. For this is the purpose that the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Amen. As Dr. Cirillo said, it's time to pull off that mask. And it's time to set our hearts at peace with God through repentance. Amen through repentance it's time folks that we return to the Lord remember what he said can I just take in short in, in the book of Malachi chapter 3 and verse number I think verse number 6 it says return unto me and I will return unto you said the Lord amen it's time for us to return to the Lord amen it's time for us to return to the Lord Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Okay, there we go.
Now it says right here in the book of Malachi. And let's look at here, here uh, right here. Glory to God. It just came up in my spirit. I just, I just want to. He said, right here, verse number six. He said, for I am the Lord. And he said, I change not. He said, I am the Lord. I change not. And then it goes on to say in verse number six. Malachi chapter 3 verse 6 Therefore ye sons of Jacob re, Ye are not consumed Even from the days of your father Ye have gone away from mine ordinances And have not kept them Then it says return unto me How many of you right now that are listening to me Know that God is calling you back into the sheepfold. He's calling you out of the your backslidden, your backsliding state of mind. And he's calling you back into the sheepfold, back into the ark of safety, so that you can be protected. Folks, danger is coming. Let us get back to what God has called us. Let us get back to what God wants us. No, no said verse number seven. For, for from the days of from the days of your fathers ye have gone away from my ordinances my my, my 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 ordinances and have not kept them return unto me and I will return to you see God said return to me and I will return to you said the Lord of hosts but ye say wherein shall we return amen return to the Lord and watch how God return to you God is slow to anger and so full of compassion and he will not harm you in any way whatsoever because he loves you and he cares for you and he wants to do everything he can to bring you back into the sheepfold so that you can be saved amen so that you can be saved be rescued amen God wants to touch you now before I go, I'm going to have to take you one more place because I know there are some people right now, you've been hurt and you don't know which way to turn. Amen. And God is calling you. He's calling you out. Amen. And he wants to bring you to a place of inner healing where you can receive everything that God has prepared for you to receive. Hallelujah. Glory to his name. Just give me a minute here. It just this the scripture just came to my heart. And I want to share it with you. Hallelujah. Here we go. to God while I'm while I'm while I'm searching that scripture I, I want you to know that no matter where you are right now God love you and he wants you to be prepared for your destiny Glory to God. He wants to heal you of your wounds. Amen. So many of us have been hurt. So many of us have been wounded. So many of us is going through different changes in life. And it all because we have not hearkened to the voice of the Lord thy God. 
we have turned a deaf ear to the will of God. And God is calling us back to himself. He's calling us back to himself. And he's given us, he's given us an opportunity to return to him. Amen. Notice what it said in Jeremiah 30, in verse number 17. Jeremiah 30, verse number 17 said, For I will restore health. This is God talking to you. He said, I will restore health. Amen. I will restore health unto you. And then he said, I will heal thee of thy wounds, said the Lord. God wants to heal you, but he wants you to believe that it is his will. I believe that his will. He wants you to believe that it's his will. See, I'm talking, oh God, someone, it just hit me in my spirit. Someone, you listen to me right now. And you've been diagnosed with AIDS. You listen to me right now. And you've been diagnosed with AIDS. God wants to heal you right now. I don't know who I'm talking to, but I'm talking to someone. God just spoke to my heart. You've been diagnosed with AIDS. Amen. And God wants to heal you right now. If if that's you, if that's you, and you and, and you and you've been diagnosed with AIDS and you want God to heal you right now, stretch your hand out and touch my hand. Oh hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke that AIDS in the name of Jesus. I rebuke it and I rebuke it. I command it to leave their body now. I speak to the blood. Blood, I command you to be healed now in Jesus' name. I speak life into the blood. Life into the blood. Father, let them have a spiritual blood transfusion right now in Jesus' name. Driving that disease out of the blood system. Driving it right out of the blood system in Jesus' name. And Father, I thank you. There it is. Receive your healing right now. Receive your healing right now. There it is in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, Father. Now, Father, I pray that that person that you're talking to will give a, a testimony of what you've just done in Jesus' name. God want to heal you. He want to restore you. He wants you to have hope once again. He wants you to establish hope in your heart once again. Because, see, God never planned for you to go that route. That was your own decision. But he's given you an opportunity to return to him. And if you return to him, you're going to walk in divine health rest of the days of your life. Amen. Return to God. I'm done now. Glory to God. I'm going to pray for everyone that is with me now. Amen. I'm going to pray for everyone. Then I'm going to go. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I release divine, divine anointing right now. I release divine anointing right now. The power of the Holy Ghost begin to flow right now into the heart of every person under the sound of my voice. Father, I bind every form of witchcraft right now and I loose it from its assignment concerning your people. That spirit of deception, I rebuke it and I command it to go in Jesus' name. Father, I release your healing power to begin to rest upon them right now. I rebuke cancer. Go right now in Jesus' name. Lung disease, go right now in Jesus' name. Blood disease, be healed right now in Jesus' name. And Father, I speak to that colon cancer. Be healed now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. God, I thank you. I thank you. Heart disease, go in Jesus' name. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now, Father, I give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're doing in the hearts and in the life of your people. We thank you. We consider it as done in Jesus' name. We love you guys. Thank you all for joining me. And continue to come on. When I come alive, when I come alive, always join me because I'm going to have a word from the Lord every time. Amen. Don't forget to join me on Sunday because Sunday we're talking about God's visitation. God bless you. Bye-bye.